The so-called reality on the ground was created over 70 years of Israel's occupation, ethnic cleansing, apartheid, theft of Palestinian land, building Jewish-only colonial settlements with the full support of the United States government. So the U.S. was uh, an enabler, a protector, a justifier of Israel's crimes against the Palestinians for 70 years. So it has changed reality on the ground, and now it wants to use that and say we have to recognize reality. The reality of Israel's apartheid regime and colonial regime cannot be legal and cannot be recognized with Trump's support or without it. So this will not add much in terms of our resistance to this regime of oppression. We'll continue to resist it. And the US xenophobic far-right government itself facing uh, questions about its own legitimacy uh, um, cannot bestow legitimacy on such a patently uh, illegal act by Israel, such as the annexation of Jerusalem. No other country on earth recognizes Israel's sovereignty on any part of Jerusalem. And the entire world recognizes East Jerusalem as occupied Palestinian territory. I was not in East Jerusalem today, but from all the reports we've seen, there's a lot of preparation for big protests tomorrow and Friday. There's a general strike tomorrow across the occupied Palestinian territory called for by all Palestinian political parties and civil society organizations. So we expect mass protests tomorrow. And if last summer's uh, Palestinian uprising uh, for Al-Aqsa is any indicator, we think that uh, peaceful protests that can attract Palestinian masses can indeed be very effective. While the US is uh, spending $38 billion in military aid to Israel over the next 10 years, it is uh, systematically, the US administration is systematically cutting social services, economic services, health services, education, climate protection, and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, people of color, communities of color are being the most affected by the Trump uh, policies. So we see the uh, inherent connection between our struggle for liberation and struggles for social justice, economic justice, LGBTQ rights, uh, uh, women's rights, and so on across the US. We're connecting our struggles with uh, the Movement for Black Lives, Latino groups, uh, indigenous uh, groups, LGBT groups, uh, progressive Jewish groups, and so on. Indeed, we see hope in this a connection, this intersectionality of struggles, if you will, between our liberation struggle and justice struggles in the US. Uh, we do not rely on US government, on the US government or Congress. Uh, Congress has uh, been for quite some time Israeli occupied territory. And it seems that the White House's foreign policy in the Middle East has become Israeli occupied territory as well, because I really cannot see that move of the embassy and recognition of Israel's sovereignty on any part of Jerusalem as serving U.S. interests, even if we narrowly define it by the 1% interests. Personally, I felt uh, a lot of anger, but I also saw a silver lining. Um, this drops the mask. The U.S. for 70 years has been enabling Israel's regime of occupation, settler colonialism and apartheid. And every crime committed against the Palestinians was enabled by the U.S. government, by U.S. taxpayers, and protected from censure, from accountability by U.S. Uh, influence at the United Nations and elsewhere. So for the U.S. to finally drop the mask and reveal its true face, the U.S. administration that is, as in bed with Israel's far-right government, the most racist government in Israel's history, uh, protecting its war crimes against the Palestinians, uh, might put an end to the illusion that the U.S. can ever be or has ever been uh, a so-called honest broker. The Trump team working on the Middle East, from Jared Kushner to Greenblatt to, Jason, uh, to Friedman, the ambassador, uh, is the most dishonest broker team in the U.S. history of so-called peacemaking. Uh, two of them, at least, uh, Kushner and uh, Friedman, are deeply invested in Israeli settlements and support Israeli settlement movements. Uh, so we, we do not expect any, any good to come out of this administration with 
the far-right Israeli influence taking over its Middle East policy. I think the liberal media has missed uh, that, that there has not been a peace process for many years. There has never been a just peace process ever, in fact, so there's no loss there. In fact, that might be good for the Palestinian struggle for liberation, that the fraudulent peace process, which acted as a cover, as a whitewash, for Israel's ongoing colonization and theft of Palestinian land and its incessant ethnic cleansing of Palestinian indigenous communities, this is coming to an end. Israel and the US are today two senior members in the club of the rising far right across the world, in Europe, India, and elsewhere. Uh, and um, they are facing a rising, on the other side, a rising wave of resistance. Our struggle for Palestinian freedom, justice, and equality is very much integrated within this global resistance to the far right, be it Netanyahu's, Trump's, or any other far right. We need to increase boycott, divestment, and sanctions campaigns in the US in particular and call for a military embargo, pressure for a military embargo on Israel, as was imposed on apartheid South Africa. We need more churches, more trade unions, uh, student groups, more academic associations, LGBT groups, to, uh, uh, progressive Jewish groups, to support this struggle for taking real sanctions against Israel.